Well, well, hi everyone. This is Ben. Wrong no, side. No, this is that ben. side. <laughs> and th this, this, this is really balked. This is Ildi. <laughs> hey! Well, um, you know, we are, we, this, is, this is a very international, even more international event than the one that we usually do, which is already, you know, super multicultural and everything. Um, this is going to be a great experience for us because we've never done this before. Uh, and this hopefully is going to be a decent experience for you. Really sorry if the audio is messed up or if this gets very pixely or anything like that. But I hope that you guys are here for the great discussions that we would like to have with you in the comments as well. So, Ben, we prepared something for today. I mean, mostly you prepared because you are doing all the technicalities and I'm just sitting here with a broken arm. No, you prepared all so. the content, so that's all that really oh, matters. No. I just twatted about with Streamlabs for a bit to try and make it work. <laughs> well, but you can tell our audience what are we watching today. Um, we're starting a series on co-ed groups. Yeah, this has been an interesting conversation of ours for, for quite a while now. Like, I'm sure that everybody who's watching this has the same question on their mind. What happened with co-ed groups and why don't we have more? So what we're going to do, we're going to go on a bit of a journey and we're going to start from the 90s, as we usually do, <laughs> because we are 90s kids. So I guess that's like appropriate. Uh, yeah, so we're going to start from the 90s and dive into a co-ed group that I think Ben knows a bit more about. So what are we starting with? I don't know much about them, but we're going to watch a group called Cool. Already good. I'm liking this already. It's going to be cool. I mean... <laughs> What can go wrong, honestly, other than the whole Streamlab thing dying? Yeah, uh, and us having to move positions because of our weird camera sorting. Whatever. I'm at my <laughs> office. This is, this is not how my actual flat looks, guys. Like, this is a, a very interesting environment. It's very late night here, and I'm not sure I should be here, but everything for K-pop, so, you know, and everything for our audience. So thank you so much for my boss, hopefully who's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we should start the video and I need to open my um, phone because I'm watching it on another camera. This is very, this is such an interesting setup, guys, but hopefully it will work. Okay, so let me do the count. You have to do the countdown because... Oh, God, hang yeah. on. Okay, it's all working. It's working yeah. on my side. We've, so once we've you transitioned to full screen, so I'm ready when you are. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, I'm already liking this. This is great. <laughs> oh, the song's called Sorrow, by the way. Sorrow? Yeah. This doesn't make a lot of sense so it's far. It's so this, this happy. Is... Yeah, it's one of those things, right? Like the, when you... Probably the lyrics contradict the actual melody of the song, right? Probably, yeah. <laughs> I don't know enough about it to, to know. <laughs> we can check that out. This is, yeah, this is when our lovely audience comes into the picture. Yes, Korean viewers, educate us, please. Hmm. Uh, wow. Googly eyes. Yeah. Of course, someone has like snow goggles because it's the nineties. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to concentrate on like the singing style, you see. Sarangu, I get that part. <laughs> Someone's driving crazy. Honest, Sarami, you know, person, people. Are very, very basic for this coming in handy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? That it's it's all bloody. Oh, here. Big man on campus. <laughs> oh. 
Okay. Possible. You know what's interesting that this guy could be could be a ballad singer as well. It, it doesn't he doesn't necessarily have a very pop vibe about him. In terms of like just the now, okay, well this girl is definitely different. It's interesting because she has these cat ears on sometimes, and act, and her her voice is also imitates some sort of. This guy's like the classic crooner. Hmm, <laughs> absolutely. I think that's that's a good good take on this. You know what's kind of interesting? You know, oh, I remember when this like fish fish eye camera came back a couple of years ago, like in certain music videos, and we were like, oh my god, that's so 90s. And it is. It is 90s. But is it as 90s as ski goggles in the summer? Mm. I mean, exercise game is strong. Yeah. And the backpack. I always wonder what's in their backpack. More ski accessories. I mean... <laughs> and the neon fashion is also something interesting, right? Cheba. Oh, high note. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what's interesting? Okay, I think let's go back to the screen. You know what is interesting, Ben? I think this these are this is a very character driven kind of band or like whole music video experience. Like it's it's them entertaining us. Mm. as much as they can if you get what i mean like this is not necessarily about like okay so what's the groundbreaking story that we are going to you know see today or or, or anything like this is more it's more about them delivering the message of the song which unfortunately as our dear korean viewers probably got uh we are not proficient in korean just yet but i literally just finished my korean lesson um it was a struggle because we are doing it on zoom and I can barely understand what the teacher is saying. But I'm not giving up. Anyway, so it's, it's kind of interesting, like, how this is a very... Yeah, I think it's character-driven music. It's, it's about them very much. It's concentrating on them. So what, what do you make of it as a first impression? Well, I mean, for me, it's not a first impression, because I quite like this song. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I'm lucky that i've watched infinite challenges toto ga which i think i've referenced several times on the channel already <laughs> but that had like a bunch of big 90s acts all performing like their big songs on stage and cool did this with like a member of jewelry in in place Ooh. of the girl who sings here okay and they were really good so uh <laughs> they made they made me like a few of their songs through that Okay, so was it similar experience to when we watched that Age OT video? Which, by the way, thank you so much for everyone who's watched it. They they sent so many lovely messages. Wonderful, thank you so much. So was it the same experience for you when you were like, oh my god, these these people are extremely good still, and like you know how uh, just athletic they are at the age of I don't know forty five or something. Was it similar? Yeah, I mean, I I just like especially the main vocalist guy. I can't mm -hmm. remember his name. I'm really sorry, but uh, <laughs> he's uh, he still sounds amazing. And like, like it's great. Like when when they were performing on Totogar, like you see them on stage, they're in like this completely impractical like ski gear, and it's really Jeez. hot. It's like the summer, I think, when they filmed that or something. And they're sweating buckets, but like every every note's on point still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're still they're still doing this like very energetic '90s choreography. Where like it might not be difficult, but it's physically taxing. So like it's it's just amazing that they're still doing that like in their forties or whatever, fifties maybe. You know what? Like I think this is this is a real mystery to me when it comes to these accessories. But like, what exactly was the reason why these got selected over everything else that was way more practical? Yeah, who was like? I mean? Just like. Yeah, but ski goggles. <laughs> but why? But it's the same. It's just, it was the same thing with Boa, right? Like, I mean, like our Atlantis princess, but like she was wearing the all those ski goggles, goggles as well. <laughs> and I, and it was already the two thousands, why, right? And I just don't necessarily understand why the goggles. Yeah. I mean, I understand the oversized fashion, and like that sort of idea, but like, 
Hmm. But what's more well, ridiculous? Here's the question: ski goggles and and winter apparel, or like giant Mickey Mouse hands like H O T had before? But these be. these had these had a lot of hands as well. I mean, like yeah. In and, all fairness, <laughs> and they had those like googly eye things as well, which were interesting. Lots of I eye this, accessories. This, yeah, yeah. This also you know reminded what reminded me of. It's kind of like. Okay, the setting was setting was different because it was in a in a flat or like a building that they entered or something. But it was almost like it gave me the vibe of playing Norebang. Mm. Like, you know, how I would then just like, you know, sing along with my friends and probably like, you know, sing through the sorrow that they experience. You know, it just like, you know, you know what, like say goodbye to the sorrow. Like again, guys, do let us know what, what it means if you if you have more knowledge on it than we do. But it's it's more like the idea of like, you know, if you're with your friends, like all oh, that sorrow could disappear or something like that. And and then the whole interaction of like people pushing each other out of the camera and whatever. I think I think that's just a you already start liking the whole group as one, as like a whole. Which is gave gave me great impression about not necessarily about individual individuality, but like their strength as a group. I they display. I think they displayed awesome chemistry, just like throughout the whole thing. So I think I'm sold on this whole idea. I would like to watch a live performance. That's the mm. thing. Well, because I'm, I'm, yeah, I think we should because I'm very curious about like you know how they interact with each other on the stage. Like, is it is it different than it is today? Mm. You know, in terms of like the dance style. Or even that legendary Totoga performance. Yeah. I think we could watch it. We can find that, um, for sure. If you, if you want to do yeah. it, we could do it. Let's try. Let's Look try at how much planning I'm... we do, by the way, viewers. We're just like in the middle of an episode deciding what we're going to watch next. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is this is almost like a you know live vlog. We, we have nothing to hide, mm. guys. Like, this is real. This is so <laughs> real. It's like after office hours. <laughs> Hopefully, I won't get into trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I, here's the thing: like, not many people, like, not many people know that, like, in here in the UK, it was so different. But in here, like, K-pop is still very, very, you know, obscure and unknown. Oh, you know what was so like, uh, what was funny today was I think one of my colleagues was watching something like on her lunch or something, and just randomly, I just like she didn't have headphones in, so I could hear what it was, and then randomly, just Dynamite started playing, and I was like, oh, okay, I guess this is just on everything now. <laughs> It is. It is on everything. But you know what was? It's a very different Korean-related thing. But today, my my uh, boss sent me a message of we should invite this philosopher Byung Chul Han, and I was like, I already wanted to invite him last year, but the problem was that he <laughs> speaks German and Korean, and oh, like okay. our event is in English or Hungarian. Uh... So it's almost like, I mean, if I mean, and am I Korean? I, I was thinking, I was hesitating to tell him that I actually, I'm actually learning Korean because <laughs> I don't think I would be able to comprehend if the cool, if Koo's lyrics are too complicated for me. I don't think Yoo <laughs> Koo Han's philosophy on like surveillance and capitalism and stuff will be something that I will understand in Korean. Yeah, it might be a, a step beyond, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Just slightly, <laughs> just slightly. <laughs> you know, a few more hours on Zoom and I'm there. Appreciate the ambition, though. Thank. I mean, thank you, thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm very ambitious. But I think it would be cool. Imagine if the guy actually comes to the event and I'm gonna be like, yes. <laughs> and he's gonna start to talk to me in Korean. I'm gonna be like, and you're there oh, like, shilla <laughs> Yeah. And now I leave because I don't know anything else. <laughs> and I and I'm and I'm gonna switch to German because my German is way better than my Korean. Willkommen, and then walk off. <laughs> Actually, my German is pretty decent. Oh, okay. I, I yeah, learned it at GCSE, need... but I never really kept up with it. Yeah, well, I, I actually need like two months to get into the German mold, and I will be like, you know what, I'm like, like lower intermediate at this stage, yeah. Nice, nice. Anyway, we were watching Toto, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Tangent over. <laughs> you know, whatever, but whoever wants to read Byung Chul Han, his new books is out. <laughs> but anywho... In, in... Any who who's interested in uh, uh, Korean philosophers, <laughs> and um, I think we could, I think we can call that the end of this first episode, and we'll be back with that Toto Girl performance. Yeah, see you guys in the next video.